Hey what's going on guys? Evan here from Nithro Fishing and today I want to talk to you guys all about beads for steelhead fishing here in Ontario. So it's early November right now. Uh, most rivers are pretty pathetically low and clear because we haven't had any rain or any real serious precipitation like the past month. But most rivers do have fish in them and one really good way to trick them in these low clear conditions is with beads. <clears throat> So first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the three main kinds of beads that we use here in Ontario. First being plastic or acrylic. Second being glass beads. And the third being soft plastic. Now two out of three of these beads are the exact same way. Those being the glass and acrylic. We're going to talk about that right now. But first I want to talk to you guys about some of the pros and cons of each of these beads. So first off, we got the, ac the acrylic or the plastic beads. Two really big pros about these is that they have neutral buoyancy and these are definitely the most natural bead to the fish. Simply because they float naturally in the current, drift along just as a salmon egg would, which is what these fish are in the rivers feeding on in the fall, and they flat out catch fish. Second, glass beads. One really big pro for these is that in really bigger water, or water that has very quick current, you're gonna be able to send these straight down to the strike zone, right where the fish are, because of all that extra added weight from the glass. And then third and final, these float, or usually have a very, very neutral buoyancy too, which makes them look really natural. These are soft plastic beads, and they're also squishy, which I believe entices a lot of fish. That's a big pro. These fish will hold on just that split second longer that you need for the hook set because that's squishy, and it feels more like a natural egg to them instead of something hard in their mouth. Um, we rig two of these three beads the exact same way. All you need, your leader, you need your bead, you need bead pegs, and you need a hook, of course. So take your leader and grab your bead of choice. Now, depending on river conditions, you're gonna want a different kind of bead. On lower clear rivers or in low clear conditions, you're gonna want a natural looking bead. Now this is a peach trout bead, eight millimeter, perfect size and color to trick these steelhead. This looks very natural to them. Next up, we got chartreuse. This is like your go-to when the water is high and dirty, moving quickly, very stained. These fish can see this from a further distance and they'll bite it. So anyways, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna work your way through different colors of beads, anywhere from the most natural, which is gonna look like peach, to the freaking the wackiest colors ever. I mean, I've caught steelhead on blue beads before. So it, you, can, you can fish anything for these fish. They're not the smartest. It's all about the presentation and how you do your rig which we're gonna talk about right now. So how we rig these beads up. Super simple procedure, you don't need to overcomplicate anything. Except for the knot, which if you use this special snell knot, you're gonna catch 10 times more fish because your fish are gonna be hooked way better. And you're also gonna hook a lot more fish. That's for later on. All you need to do to rig a bead is take the line, slide it straight through the middle of the bead so that the bead's positioned on your line like that. Grab your bead peg. You can buy these, all this stuff you can buy at any tackle store that sells steelhead supplies here in Ontario. If they sell beads, they got hooks, row bags, anything else for steelhead, they definitely got it. So take your peg and slide it straight through the middle of that bead, like so. And then what you're gonna wanna do is take the bead and slide it up the peg enough. Ooh, that was too much. Slide it up the peg enough so that it's firmly on the line but it's not on there too tight where it's cutting the line or anything. Uh, you'll have more of a problem with that with glass beads because they have sharper edges. They'll fray your line up a little more. Plastic and soft plastic beads you don't need to worry about as much. But definitely don't make it too tight where it's fraying your line. But you can't make it too loose where it's sliding up and down because it's hitting rocks or even just fish in the river. So once you've got your peg positioned correctly and your bead is firmly on your line, take a pair of scissors or nippers, whatever you got, and cut the ends off of both of those peg or off both sides of the peg as close as you can to the bead. You know, you don't want to try to you want to try to leave as little extra on either side of the bead as possible. That's especially important with colored pegs. With clear, not as much. Um, now that your bead is positioned on your line firmly, take your hook. Now, what I want to talk to you guys about is the special knot that I use when I'm fishing with beads for steelhead here in Ontario. Now that's the snell knot. 
You can use a traditional clinch knot to fish for these fish, but the problem is the line can slide all around the eye of this hook. Now, when you set the hook and your line slips, that hook will miss the fish. You won't hook that fish. When you fish with this snell knot, as you'll see later, the line is secure to where the hook's tied on. It, it can't move. It's always going to be positioned in the same spot, which is going to give you a 10 times better hookup ratio. It'll be a lot easier to explain once the knot's actually tied. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you guys now. Now, there's a very specific way that you need to tie this knot in order for it to work correctly. I know this because I thought this knot was shit for like three years because I wasn't tying it right. And it always broke on me because I wasn't tying it right. So what you need to do, take your line, take the end of your line. Now, I'm using heavier line here for demonstration purposes. And then take your hook. Typically, you're going to want an octopus hook, but I'm just using a huge siwash hook here just for demonstration purposes again. But you're going to want a hook that has an offset eye. It's going to make this knot a lot easier to tie, and it's also going to improve the knot strength a lot. So take your hook and look at it like this. Hold it like this. Take your line and put it in backwards and pull it up just so that you have a little bit of line hanging off the back of the hook like that. Now you're going to want to pinch this with your finger right at the back here and take the top end of the line and wrap that around the shank of the or the shank of the hook six or seven times. I'm going to do like four or five just because this line is so heavy. One, two, three, four, five. Now that that's wrapped on there just like that, you want to make sure that you have clean wrap so that the knot cinches down properly and it'll make it ten times stronger. Take the tag end off your leader and place it straight back through the eye of that hook. Now make sure that you still hold tension here or else the line, it'll, it'll tangle up, it'll curl up and the knot won't tighten down correctly. So hold that tension all the way until the knot forms right down onto the hook. Make sure you use some saliva to wet your line first so you avoid fray. And then pull this knot tight. Of course, you're going to want to pull the tag end tight as well. And then trim that off as close as you can. But make sure to leave a little bit just so the knot does not slip. Now, the reason that this is so much more effective than the improved clinch knot is because with the clinch knot, the line can move around all sides of the eye. With this, the hook is going to be positioned exactly like this the entire time your bee is drifting through the water. That means when the fish grabs something up here and you set the hook, it's gonna catch every single time. As long as that hook is positioned correctly, it's gonna hook that fish every single time. That's why that snell knot is so important. Now, rigging soft beads, way easier, or at least the way I do it, because I don't overcomplicate things. I take my hook, and I grab my soft bead, and I pierce the soft bead, with the hook right down the middle. I fish it just like that. Because you don't need to overcomplicate things. As long as you're using a hook that's light enough of a wire that the fish can't notice it, you'll hook so many more fish when you're rigging it just like this. Your hookup ratio will be way, way better and you'll land a lot more fish because these fish are gonna be hooked a lot better. Because typically they're gonna be hooked on the inside of the mouth rather than on the outside. And they're gonna be hooked a lot deeper as well. You're gonna hook a lot of fish very lightly with beads, specifically plastic and glass. But with soft beads, you'll hook these fish inside the mouth and you'll get a nice deep hook set on them. So you won't lose nearly as many fish. So I hope this was helpful for all you guys, especially you new anglers. I hope you guys have good luck out here on the river. And most importantly, we gotta pray we get some rain soon. But have a nice night guys. Thanks for tuning in.